Hello, everyone. Welcome to our panel discussion. Revisiting George Washington's assault on the Haudenosaunee 240 years later. Um, my name is Phil Arnold. I'm the chair of the religion department at Syracuse University and founding director of the Scano Great Law Peace Center. Um, I have to wear this SU hat because uh, we're headed into a football game. So that's my obligation today. But we have a great lineup for you today. Um, but I wanted to first uh, thank um, Adam Brett and Sarah Shute who are running the tech for us today. Uh, this is all an experiment for all of us. So um, please bear with it if there's some uh, technical issues. Um, but it's great to be with you today and thanks for coming. Um, let me share a screen. And begin a PowerPoint. All right. So I wanted to mention that um, this assault on the Haudenosaunee, which is character called the Sullivan Clinton campaign, is a far ranging topic and we're just going to touch on a few details today. But it's um, critical for understanding the relationship between the United States and Native American or indigenous peoples of the Americas. Um, just years before 1779, just a decade before, founding fathers were sitting in council with the Haudenosaunee learning about the great law of peace in order to form American democracy. And then after 1779, there is this attack on the Haudenosaunee and everything changed. So moving from the colonial period to the American period is what defines um, these relationships. And so it is not just to help us understand the Haudenosaunee, but American history better and our relationship with indigenous peoples. Uh, we have excellent presenters today. Um, Alyssa Mount Pleasant from the University of Buff Buffalo in transnational studies. Alyssa is going to talk to us in a wide range of issues, um, historical issues, uh, Buff Buffalo Creek and other things. Uh, we're, we're really grateful to have her with us today. Jake Edwards of the Onondaga Nation, who is um, very deeply knowledgeable of not only this event and the history around this event, really the oral history of this event, but also deeply knowledgeable of the language and cultural traditions of the Haudenosaunee. And Andrea Smith from Lafayette College, uh, who is going to introduce us to the, you know, kind of constant resistance of the Haudenosaunee uh, to these, to a kind of false memory around the Sullivan Clinton campaign. Our sponsors today are the Syracuse Humanities, Syracuse University Humanities Center, uh, Syracuse University Department of Religion, the Scano Great Law Peace Center, and the Indigenous Values Initiative. All right, first, um, I wanna talk about the Scano Great Law Peace Center because I hope all of you will become much more interested in visiting the Scano Center. Um, this is a little introduction to myself, but as the founding director of the Scano Center, we put a great deal of energy into uh, portraying the Haudenosaunee values and particularly the Onondaga values uh, at the Scano Center. Uh, and I wanna describe it a little bit to you. So uh, in 1656 to 1658, just 20 short months, the, the uh, Jesuits founded a fortified mission or fort at Onondaga Lake. And they were representing the French colonial government in Montreal that granted them title to Onondaga Lake and the territory before they came really about 600 square miles around Onondaga Lake. So this legacy has been celebrated at Onondaga Lake with the French fort first in 1933 and then later with St. Marie among the Iroquois, which is expanded into what's called the Living Museum that celebrated this colonial history. That went out of business in 2011. And then um, we took over uh, to repurpose St. Marie among the Iroquois into the Scano Great Love Peace Center. 
And that now tells the story of the founding of the Haudenosaunee thousands of years ago at Onondaga Lake and to bring back a presence of the, of the Haudenosaunee there to Onondaga Lake. So now we tell a very different story than the colonial one. The Scano Center originated with this collaborative, this wide ranging collaborative. The Scano Center is a county, Onondaga County facility. It's managed by Onondaga Historical Association, but the narrative was crafted by a variety of academics uh, from these different colleges, universities in our area and foundations. And this all enabled us to have the uh, strong message from the Onondaga Nation, which is the central fire of the Haudenosaunee there at the Scano Center. Uh, for those of you who don't know about the Haudenosaunee, it means people of the Longhouse. Their colonized name is the Iroquois, which is largely considered a, a negative term, a pejorative term. Originally, five nations were founded as a confederacy at Onondaga Lake. Um, the Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, Cayuga, Tuscarora, and Seneca, the Tuscarora, joined later. But the influences of the Haudenosaunee ranged very far from Nova Scotia to the Mississippi River uh, Valley, from the Great Lakes into Georgia. So they were well known and a very powerful influence all through the colonial period. Today, Onondaga Nation, the territory we're currently in, is among the last sovereign nations that are, that are run by their traditional governments or pre-American governments. And the great law of peace is one of those elements that inspired Western democracy, the women's movement, lacrosse, and a variety of other things. You can learn about this all at the Scano Center. So at Onondaga Lake, right near Syracuse, New York, we have this very important body of water that is uh, culturally distinctive for its founding of the Great Law of Peace. You know, recent archaeological ex excavations put it at 909 CE is probably much earlier than that. That so this in you know very important narrative first contact with Jesuit missionaries, and we do still have the Jesuit fort, there's a photo of it there, and then also a stop along the Erie Canal, and also it had a direct involvement in the Sullivan-Clinton campaign, which we'll try to describe today. So um, at the Scano Center, we take a values approach. Um, this uh, describes the six different video stops, uh, content stops uh, through the Scano Center. And it, and it really describes the oral history of the Haudenosaunee. Um, I'll just uh, mention that it's not until the fifth video that we get to European contact. So we're really trying to introduce people to the Haudenosaunee value system in a kind of a, in a very abbreviated way. Um, and then uh, leading up to contact, you'll notice that Sullivan Clinton campaign is one of those elements. So what is the Sullivan Clinton campaign? Um, it was a US attack on the Haudenosaunee that for some reason is not showing up here on my, but it's from April to October of 1779, all right? And this map describes the route of the Sullivan Clinton campaign, which is often described as starting in late summer, that comes right up the Susquehanna River into Cayuga ter territory first and then Seneca territory. But also earlier that year, Onondaga was attacked through uh, Fort Stanwix up here, and that's often neglected in the story of the Sullivan Clinton campaign. So I wanna emphasize that in my talk. Sullivan, uh, George Washington wrote to Major General John Sullivan, uh, 31 May, 1779, the expedition you are appointed to command is to be directed against the hostile tribes of the Six Nations of Indians, i.e. the Haudenosaunee with their associates and adherents. 
the immediate objects are total destruction and devastation of their settlements and the capture of as many prisoners of every sex and age as possible. It will be essential to ruin their crops in the ground and prevent their planting more. Okay, so what this describes is a scorched earth campaign by Washington directing John Sullivan. Now, um, they were dedicating about a million dollars in, in money of that period. And this is highly unusual because the Cong Congressional Congress at this time was broke. Um, and so they're right in the middle of the Re Revolutionary War against England, but they suspend the Revolutionary War to attack the Haudenosaunee. Now, one of the questions is why? Now, quite the opposite than, the, than they're being hostile to the Patriots, um, there was an agreed on neutrality agreement between the Grand Council of Chiefs and the Patriots just a few years earlier. So really what's happening here with, the, with Washington's decision is to open up the continent for white settlement, the dispossession of Haudenosaunee people and other indigenous people, and then paying the Patriots with land. Remember, upstate New York has the most rich agricultural land in probably the, the world. So this is very highly coveted land, uh, which you can learn about um, through the work of Jane Mount Pleasant and others at Cornell University. All right, all right. So the consequences of the Sullivan campaign, this plaque, by the way, is um, in Nedro, New York, um, and also appears at the Scano Center. Uh, this laid waste, uh, laid the land to waste. It's, as I said, scorched earth. Uh, 250,000 bushels of corn were destroyed, were scorched, and uh, this is commemorated in some of the foodways of the Seneca in particular. Um, 43 Haudenosaunee towns were burned, uh, and also the winter of 1779-80 was very hard. There was starvation and homelessness. And as a result of this, the Haudenosaunee refer to Washington and also the office of the president from that moment to today as Hanadagaius, the destroyer of villages. This is a map of central New York after the Sullivan Clinton campaign. This is a bit later, a uh, map drawn um, by Simon DeWitt, uh, which describes what's called the military tracks, which came as a result of uh, the Sullivan Clinton campaign. You'll notice here the Onondaga Reservation, as it's called, Onondaga Castle, completely surrounds, it's really Syracuse, and surrounds Onondaga Lake, Cayuga Reservation, which is uh, also disputed territory, is also mentioned here. And you'll notice Tully, Fabius, Marcellus, Manlius, Camillus, Cicero, all kind of uh, Greco-Roman military leaders. Uh, and, and there is this emphasis on military occupation, which I want to mention later. Okay, so I want to thank here uh, Bob Spiegelman, Robert Spiegelman, who wasn't able to join us today, unfortunately, but Rob, uh, Bob has dedicated his life, he's a sociologist, dedicated his life to help us understand the Sullivan Clinton campaign as a major moment in American identity, in American history. And he has created this site, the Sullivan Clinton campaign. We want to introduce this site to you because uh, we have helped Bob restore the site, which was on kind of shaky ground. Adam has put a lot of time into this. And a lot of the content here, we have maps and galleries and texts. In 1879, there was a big celebration of the Sullivan Clinton campaign, which republished, republished a lot of these founding documents. So a lot of that is on. We want to also invite you, I know there are many people that are working on this uh, topic as well. We want to invite you to um, participate in growing this site to make it more of a, a distribution hub for those of us who want to introduce our students to these to this topic and this important information. Okay, so 
the, imp the thing about the Sullivan Clinton campaign is that it, it was specifically geared to try to break the back of the Haudenosaunee. What we'll discover though, is that it actually did not. And um, uh, Alyssa's work goes particularly to that, to that uh, topic. And what we know, some of what we know about the, uh, about the uh, event comes from the uh, journals of this foot soldiers that were in Sullivan's uh, attack force. And I want to read one of those to you in a bit. But first, I want to emphasize this point because I'm a historian of religions and I'm not strictly speaking a historian. I don't just talk about texts. I'm also interested in the oral history and what other resources we can count on to think about American identity and our relationship with the indigenous peoples here. So what really is stark to me is the Sullivan Clinton campaign defines a kind of settler colonial relationship to the land. And that has to do with a military style occupation. And that is one of the consequences of the Sullivan Clinton campaign that I think is most profoundly important in these days of climate change. So I'm gonna talk about something else that happens just before um, Washington's letter to Sullivan. It's called the Van Schaik attack on the Onondaga Nation, which happened on the 21st of April, the spring of 1779, just before Sullivan Clinton. Um, lieutenant Beatty's uh, part, uh, he's, a, he's a, a lieutenant in the in Van Schoik's arm, army, and he uh, has a surviving journal of the attack. And I will just show it to you, it's here in this, uh, in this uh, link, but um, what he describes on the 21st, uh, the morning of the 21st is him, them going across the, uh, wading across Onondaga Lake and Onondaga Creek, taking people prisoners, um, one guy's out hunting, another person, another woman is out with her children and two women and one of them is killed. Uh, there's a white man, there's um, also uh, a Negro, as they say, who is their doctor. There's lots of very interesting tidbits here, but also it's kind of describes them, the kind of banality of genocide here, um, that, that they're, they're marching on Onondaga. They're attempting to destroy Onondaga, which is the central fire. They know this. And, they're, they're, um, and what he describes is um, at the end, we killed about 15, took 34 prisoners, burned about 30 or 40 houses. And these houses are enormous multi-family houses, but not one of their men was killed. So I just wanted to um, demonstrate for you how these, these, uh, these diaries can be valuable, but also they lie, right? They don't give you the whole story. So how do we get the whole story? And that's one of the questions, kind of the methodological questions we're working with here. So, uh, he launches his attack from St Fort Stanwix. This is some artist rendering of the Sullivan Clinton campaign, how they destroyed all of these towns. Um, uh, and then on their way out from the attack at Onondaga, um, on the 22nd of April, 1779, there are these plaques where they camp on an island. He mentions that in his diary. You know, so there, there are all these plaques, which Andrea will be telling us about too. Uh, fort Brewerton was one of the, kind of the westward fort fortified uh, places where they uh, also stopped along the route back to Fort Stanwix. Then there's this tortured history that used to appear in Onondaga Park here located in um, Syracuse. And I'll just read it. Indian attack on Colonel Van Schoik's ex expedition against the Onondaga, April 21, 1779, put up in 1930. Now I want you to take a minute and think about this. 
what they're celebrating, what they're commemorating is the Indian attack against the colonel that just had attacked the Onondagas, all right? So there's this kind of tortured memory here, which we're trying to correct in many ways. So the Onondaga are burned out of their home. Um, and when they return, they hear a voice in the woods. Okay, remember, everything is gone, all their food stores. Uh, the, the winter of 1780 is the worst in memory. Um, it's cold, people are starving and freezing. And what they hear in the woods is the 17 year locust. And according to the Onondaga, this is the first appearance of the locust, uh, which they regard as a gift of the creator. And the Onondaga people are the only people of the Haudenosaunee to eat these locusts. But what they do when they eat the locust every 17 years is tell the story of the Sullivan Clinton campaign to their children. So this is history. This is oral history. And this is the 17 year locust in 2018 was their last appearance. And in history of religions, we refer to these manifestations of the sacred as hierophanies, as manifestations of the sacred. So the 17 year locust, this isn't biblical locust, which is a plague and all that, right? This is a gift from the creator. And in 2018, we had the opportunity to, to uh, eat the locust. I wanna talk, show you a very brief film if I can indulge my panelists here. And, um, but first I wanted just to mention our organization, uh, nonprofit organization, Indigenous Values Initiative. Please go and email us if you have any comments, questions, or interest in uh, pursuing this topic.
Thanks very much, everyone.